Hello, and welcome to Old Canyon Forge. My name is Dan Rotblatt, the proprietor of this fine establishment, and today we're here to do episode one of Knife Making 101, How to Make a Knife with the Minimal Tools. The way I came about this idea is that I saw on Facebook so many enthusiasts wanting to learn how to make a knife, wanting to make it for them for the first time, and saying, what do I need? What do I need to get? What kind of tools do I need? So I decided to do a video making a knife using the very minimal of tools and the minimum expense. To minimize the expense in tools, the first thing I had to figure out was how to make the knife. Are we going to forge it? If we forge it, we have to buy an anvil. It's at least several hundred dollars. We have to make a forge. We have to buy hammers and tongs. It's a huge expense. You're looking at five, six hundred dollars just to get into that part of it. There's ways to do it cheaper, but pretty much do it right. That's how you have to spend. So I decided to make a knife using stock removal. Using stock removal, we just take a piece of steel, cut, cut it to shape, grind the blade out, heat treat it, and we're done. The investment in tools is so much less. The quality of knife, in my opinion, is exactly the same. In fact, there's more ways to ruin a knife with forging than there is with stock removal. Even with stock removal, we're going to have to heat treat the knife. So we have to bring it up to about 1500 degrees. In order to do that, we will be making a forge. It's a very small tubric forge. $60 investment. It's going to take us an hour and a half to make. Actually, a little less than that. And it will work fine for heat treating a small knife. Since we're doing stock removal... So we're not going to use a forge. We don't have to make one. Belt grinders? They're really expensive. How about a forging press? Nice, but close to $5,000. How about a power hammer? Good tool, but once more, took close to a month to build. Instead, we'll only need two power tools. The first, our primary tool, is the lowly angle grinder. We'll primarily do all our work with this. In addition, we will also need a power drill. These two power tools will allow us to make our knife. The rest will be hand tools, files, sand, hand sanding, pretty much that's it. With those tools, we'll be able to make a knife like this. Let's take a look at the steps we're going to go through to make this knife. In part one of our video, we'll start by drawing the knife out on a piece of steel. Then we'll take a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder and cut out the profile. We will then refine the profile by grinding. Once the profile is done, we'll continue using the grinding wheel on the angle grinder to grind the bevel. Now that most of the material is removed with a power tool, we can start doing some handwork with a file, uh, finishing up and refining that bevel. We return with the angle grinder and a 120 grit flap disc to remove those file marks. The last step before heat treat is to drill holes in the handle. We've now completed part one of our video. In our second video, part two, we're going to make a small heat treat forge out of two insulating fire bricks. We'll finish up part two by heat treating the knife. In our third video, part three, we'll finish the knife. We'll start by hand sanding the blade to get out all the marks from the previous work. We will cut and rough shape the handle and then glue it onto the knife. Once attached to the knife, we will shape the handle to a comfortable fit in our hand, sand it, oil it, and we're ready to sharpen and finish the knife.
Okay, now we can move forward and... Oh, what was I thinking? That was a total spoiler. You know exactly what's going to happen. <sighs> well, regardless, if you want to see a little more detail, let's move on and get started and actually make a knife. Okay, this is our foot-long piece. First, I want to figure out about how long my handle is. Um, and actually, we'll cut that off there. So, I want my handle to be about this long. And maybe a little longer. Let's make it that long. We can always take some off, so better longer than shorter. Okay, and then we're going to make a blade about this long. Now the reason I'm not doing a long blade is because in the forge we're making we can only heat four or five inches of blade so this should be fine. So let's put the tip about there. We'll make it a drop point which is this area. This is the point. It's dropped. It's called the drop point. And I'm going to make a fairly simple shape at the of the handle. We're just going to do something like that. And. it around like that. I'll bring that all the way to the end. And that's going to be my knife. Now if you don't like what you see, you can take a little alcohol and white rub it off because this is Sharpie. It comes off really easily. I'm not quite satisfied with this profile, so let's just change it a little bit. So, I kind of like that. That's a good looking little knife. It feels like the handle is long enough. So, I think we're, we're ready to go. So, we'll be cutting it out. We'll do a cut up here. We'll do a cut like this. And like that. And then we'll grind away the rest. You can clamp it to any form of table. My, uh, my friend Leland said you could clamp it to a sawhorse. You don't need... Uh, this is a welding table, but you don't need the, anything that fancy. You can clamp it, anything you can clamp it on that's really stable. I mean, this is not that great, but it's stable. Um, or you could use something like this. Here's a small table vise. Uh, I don't know where I got it. This is a clamp-on vise. Then um, they clamp onto a wood or any kind of table. I don't know, you can pick these up used, probably don't cost that much. They all work. Anything that will support your piece. So, so I could film on the video, I made this little uh, table rest here that goes on my anvil in the hardy hole. Um, so I'll be clamping it, and this is probably the least expensive way you can do it. These things cost probably a buck. Uh, little C-clamps at uh, Harbor Freight. Um, always use two. One of them allows it to pivot. Uh, two, and I'm going to put this on the bottom, like that. Two does not allow that. So, two clamps, always. Uh, anything you want to clamp it to that's sturdy, C-clamps. We start grinding by making a little nick in the metal where we want to start. And then we rock the grinder back and forth in order to make a groove that the blade will follow. The amount of pressure you apply is just a little more than the weight of the grinder.
Okay, we've cut out the profile with the cutoff wheel. We now have to change from the cutoff wheel, uh, which is this thin, thin wheel, to the grinding wheel. Helps tail the wrench. Okay, unplug. There's a button on the back, and you hold the button in, which locks the, the, the shank here, and, the, uh, and then you just unscrew that nut. Now, the cutoff wheel, as you can see, is very thin, whereas the grinding wheel is much thick. They're quarter inch thick. Um, and when you put them on, you put them on differently. They go on like this. The label goes down. The nut has a lip on one side. When you have a grinding wheel on, you put that lip down onto the wheel, and it's going to fit. It fits in that hole. Um, with a cutoff wheel, you don't want it to go in that hole because it's deeper than the actual wheel. So you turn it over and use the flat side. The hole's a different size. Okay. Actually, there's a lip on the uh, in here. So you put this on. You put that with the lip down. Grind it on. You hold the little lock there, and you give it a nice torque. Give it a spin or two by hand to make sure it's centered, doesn't wobble. You, you might have missed the hole in there. And then we're going to go and grind this. Now, normally, I would put this on a vise angled up, but I'm assuming you don't have a vise. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to start with the uh, knife down here on its side instead of vertical. Vertical is easier, but it doesn't matter. Once more, we're not doing a great deal of pressure to grind the metal here. You want to let the grinding wheel do the grinding. So maybe twice the weight of the grinder here. Well, now that we see that we can do it horizontally like that, I'm going to do this vertically. I'll put the handle from the top to the side. I'm talking lattice because I have my earplugs on. And I'll move the guard so it protects this hand because I'll be holding it like this. Here we go. Okay, we finished the profile here. So the next thing we have to do to, before we grind the, two, grind the two bevels is we've got to find the center line here. Uh, the reason for this is, is, is we want the two sides to be the same. We want that center line where the edge is to be a straight edge. So we are going to take a piece of scrap from our knife, and I think this is the piece that went right here, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm going to cut it off and we're going to file the end so we can make a scribe that we can scrape two lines there. Um, and this will be a tool that you can keep and will work every time you need to use, you need to make a knife with this thickness metal. So let's do that. Okay, the first thing I want to do is this is uh, that thin end and I'm just going to chop it off. Um, you can use anything to do that. I'm going to use a hacksaw. But you can use your uh, cutoff disc on your um, angle grinder. So we have a piece like this. And um, this is really sharp. I'll be filing that down. And then all we'll do is file this. Um, this piece 
with two angles like this. So we'll make a point here. And that point will be roughly halfway between the two. It doesn't have to be exact, and I'll show you why when we scribe the line. Okay, you will need files, and this is a uh, bastard file. It's a cross-cut, fairly rough file, but we'll be fine for this. And I'm keeping it on the same angle, and files is where you don't cheap out. That's the one thing I'd say, get good ones. These I get from McMaster Car. Now, the face top and bottom is the face of the steel. That's the flat of the steel. The sides are the cut sides. And I want to go all the way to a very sharp point. Okay. So what we have here is a little sharp point, And it's probably not exactly even, and I don't care. Um, the edges on that are kind of nasty. A finer file would work better for this, but... That's it. Now, I can take this and harden it, which is... Uh, I don't know, once we get the forge going and do hardening, we'll do it, but it's fine for what it's doing right now. Okay. Uh, now, if we want to see the uh, mark that we make a little better, we can use poor man's Daikin Blue. Daikin Blue is a uh, metal uh, marking die that machinists use. Sharpie is a marking pen that we use. Okay, it will actually scratch the metal, but you can see it easier this way. I'm going to hold this flat. Actually, there's a nice burr on there. Let's take that off. There's a couple reasons to take that burr off. One, it'll lift it up off the uh, table and our line won't be centered. And the other is we will cut the crap out of ourselves with it because those burrs are sharp as sin. Okay. We want to place this down on the table. We want to place it so that the flat is the same as the knife. The, the, this part and this part are the same. This came right off of it. And then we're just going to okay. and then we'll do the other side. The reason I'm doing it on two sides is because that point is not in the exact center. So what will happen is I will have two lines evenly apart. And those will be my center lines. We want to, when we're cutting the bevel, now can we see that? Yeah, there you go. So you get two lines apart. When we're cutting the be grinding the bevel down, we want to go to that outer line. We want the blade edge to be about a thickness of a dime. We're using a grinding wheel on the angle grinder to grind the bevel. The objective here 
is to grind a flat bevel from the depth where we scribe the edge line to the grind line near the spine there up on top. As we grind, we can see where we're grinding by looking at the scratch marks essentially that the grinder creates. By looking at the grind marks, you can see that I'm working the bottom half of the bevel primarily. As I grind away more metal, I'm gonna work higher and higher up towards the grind line or the spine of the knife. When you grind, you're grinding with the edge of the wheel, not the outer rim, but the, but the edge. So the grinder is held at maybe five or 10 degrees angle. The more you angle the grinder, say 15, 20, even 30 or 40 degrees, the smaller the width of area you're gonna grind. The flatter the angle grinder is held to the bevel, the wider and flatter the grind will be. As we grind away more metal, stop periodically and check where, how close we are to the scribe line on our edge. And if you wanna see where you're grinding, sometimes a Sharpie can be extremely helpful. As we get closer to our scribed edge, We'll work the plunge line, which is the area near the handle, and I'll also change direction that I'm grinding in order to kind of uh, even out the surface. Here I've checked the edge and found where it's thick, and so I'm just going to work those areas further, and I just kind of mark it with a sharpie to make it easier for me to work. I'm not worried about it turning blue or changing, you know, getting hot because the knife isn't heat treated yet. Here I'm working the plunge line a bit. We have a nice sharp edge on this grinding wheel because it's a new one, so we'll get a nice plunge line there. And this is very gentle work, and I'm just gently touching it there to make it work. Using the plunge line on one side, I'm marking it on the other side, and I'm going to make a rough sketch of where I want the plunge line and the grind line to be. If you want to fast forward, the next section starts at about minute 28. And that'll be using the flap disc to uh, sand and clean up our grind. This angle is a little bit different than this one. So we'll our plunge, this is our plunge line right here. That's our grind line on the back. Um, the plunge line, we will fix this on that side and then we'll go to a flap disc.
The uh, flap discs have the same issue as the uh, grinding discs. When they get old, they get rounded. So we're going to use a new one so we can get into that edge. Once more, if I'm talking loud, I'm sorry. I've got my earplugs on. Flap discs go on like um, cutting discs. You want your ridge up. And they'll fit into a little um, rise in there. And give it a good crank. Spin it. And this is a 120 grit flap disc, which is the right amount for uh, when we're going to go um, heat treat it. We're going to use a little flap disc and then we'll do some hand filing. Um, and then probably go another round with a flap disc on it. Same as the grinding disc. Use a very light touch with the sanding disc. It's a flexible and will kind of wrap around any corners or edges so it'll take out your edge area it'll take out the spine and round it out so keep it really light um, you can actually see it there uh, kind of flatten out where you're touching it or I'm touching it to the uh, bevel like the grinding disc watch the marks that the sanding disc leaves to see where you're sanding once more, if you want to work a small area or a detail, angle the grinder more and it'll be sanding a smaller area. If you want to smooth out a large area like I'm doing here, you want to keep the grinder flat to the bevel. Here I'm working the plunge line and I'm barely touching that flap disc to the bevel. This is very gentle work. Okay, now we're going to do a little filing. We're going to get these, they're pretty close, we're going to get the choil, two plunge lines to match on the choil there. I'm also going to put a little um, notch right at the base of the blade here, so that when we, when we sharpen it, it has a place for the sharpening to kind of end, otherwise it will end up dropping there. Look funny. Um, I have some uh, profiling to do, and I'll do that by hand with a file, it's just on the tip. Always gets messed up whenever I'm doing this on it with an angle grinder. I rarely use an angle grinder for this. Um, and we have a different sweep here than here, but I think the file will uh, will pretty much fix that up. So we've got a kind of a flat here with a curve up there. And this has kind of a nice curve here. Um, but that's not a big deal. We'll fix that up on the next round. So let's uh, go to the vise. So even though this is a handy, some sort of table is handy to do this, and for the flat grinding it's great, um, a vise is really good to have. Now I can clamp this on here and do all my filing on here, but a vise makes it so much easier. I'm going to use the little table vise, which is over there, so uh, let's go. I'll essentially be using four files to uh, do all the filing. Uh, the one I'm using here uh, to start is a flat bastard file. A uh, bastard file is a cross cut, it means it has two sets of cuts for the teeth uh, at like 30 degree angles going in opposite directions. And you'll see them if you look closely at the file. It's a fairly coarse file and it's good for doing the, uh, the coursework on it. I'll also use a half round bastard file. I just like how it cuts. You don't need that. Um, although it's handy to do inside curves, so your decision. Um, I'll also be using a four inch um, second cut Nicholson file. It's a very fine file. And one of the edges, um, and this is it right here, um, one of the edges uh, has no teeth on it. So it allows me to, that, that edge has no teeth. 
So it allows me uh, right now, I'm not cutting down onto the bevel, I'm just cutting back into the uh, plunge line here and I'm just cleaning up the plunge line using this file. As for cutting technique, once more, watch for the light refracting off the, the new cut edges as you, as you do each stroke, uh, and you'll see where you're cutting. You can certainly use Sharpie as well to um, see where you're cutting, where you're removing metal. The idea here is we're just trying to clean off all the grind marks and smooth out the surface. If possible, like you can see here, I have one hand on the front and one hand on the back of the file. This allows me to keep the file flat to that bevel. I don't want to be angling it up or down. I want to keep it just parallel with that bevel in order to uh, prevent uh, us from getting a concave, uh, sorry, convex surface. By using a Sharpie, we can easily see where the file is cutting material. The file only cuts on the forward stroke and I often, as you can tell uh, while you're watching, you might have noticed, I push on the forward stroke and then lift the file lightly and bring it back. So I'm only allowing the file to touch on the forward stroke. It doesn't hurt the file if you're going um, forward and back on it and not lifting it. It will pull chips back and scratch your material quite often. If you notice when I was working on the plunge line, I was stroking back and forth, and when I'm working in a notch, I'll go uh, back and forth. I won't lift the, uh, the file. Here we're pretty much done. We've gotten all the grind marks out. Just a little teeny bit there, which will come out with the flap disc later. Now that we're finished with the bevel, we'll start by profiling the blade more. This is uh, just a close-up. You can see that there's no um, teeth on this one side of the... Um, file, and we're going to use that to cut the notch in. A couple careful forward strokes just to start a little notch. Once I've got it, I can start going back and forth. And I'll either use the side without teeth or the side with teeth, depending on whether I want to cut on both sides of that notch or in one direction or the other. That way I can control where that notch is. We're also going to clean up the profile, fix the tip, and we're using a larger file for this. Large, even strokes down the whole blade. And now we're going to move to the needle file, which is a small triangular file. It's uh, greater than 90 degrees, so it's going to give us a little sharper end to the notch, or bottom to the notch there. And we're just going to take that and file that, and then round it a little bit, as I recall. Take off the edges. Yeah, see, I'm pointing down a little bit. There we go. I'm sorry, my hand's in the way here, but I'm using the half round file uh, to even up that concave surface on the front of the handle. all the profile uh, filing, the finished profile, and let's take a look at the edge. You can see the tip's a little thicker in here, so I'm going to mark this with Sharpie and just so we can see it a little better, hopefully. We can see that tip area is a bit thicker, just in the top inch or so, so we'll go back in and file that pretty quick. Thank you. 
Now we're going to go back to the flap disc on the angle grinder. All we're doing here is taking out the file marks. So it's a very light touch. Uh, to get that out, it's going to go very quickly. Uh, set it up so that the light is shining off the blade a little bit so you can see the re refraction of light on the grind marks that you're making or on the sanding marks that you're making. And um, you can also see when you've gotten all the file marks out. This is what it should look like. You could have a few little marks in there, no big deal. The main thing is that you get those file marks out. We will be hand sanding later. So what you don't get out, uh, you'll be hand sanding away later. So lots of work. The next thing we're going to do is drill the holes in the handle. In order to do that, we need to make a punch so that we can make a little divot in the handle so the drill will not wander and go all over the place when we try to drill those holes. We want them in the right spot. All we're going to do is take a concrete nail and file a 45 degree uh, angle on the top just to blunt the tip a little. It's sharp, but it's, it's not as pointy. Um, and that's going to be uh, our punch. We're going to start by drawing roughly where we think the handle, uh, the wood handle is going to end, um, what we want it to look like, and uh, roughly where we want the holes to be. Then we're going to take a pair of dividers, uh, another purchase, not too expensive, and we're going to use these to mark the center line of the handle and mark where our holes are going to be roughly. This is all visual or what looks good. We're going to use the punch we made to stamp the divot in our handle. Now I'm checking our pin stock uh, to see what its width is and checking a drill against that. The reason I'm wearing a glove here is because that's the hand I'm going to be using to hold the knife when I drill it. And that'll be safer. I'm now going to just drill a little divot. I'm not going too deep and I'm not going very fast because I don't want to heat up the drill. Then I'm going to add a little bit of oil so that it'll be lubricated. I'm not speeding this up so you can see the actual speed that I use. Now what we're looking for when we drill is that it's pulling up actual chips. And you can see the chips pulling up here. If it pulls up these spirals, that's great. I'm giving it a good deal of pressure and trying to keep it really straight and not going very fast uh, drill speed wise. through and you can see these uh, nice chips that it's pulled up. That's what we want to see. And now we're just going to rinse and repeat for the other hole.
there we go. The knife is ready for heat treat. Our holes are drilled. Um, if I was concerned about this area, the handle getting hot and um, quenching it, I would chamfer these holes just a little bit, but only the blade will get hot, only up to about here. Um, so I don't think it's going to be any problem. Um, we could do more sanding now, but uh, in heat treat, it messes up the finish anyway, so we'll, uh, we'll do all the sanding, any, any finished sanding we want to do on it afterwards. The edge is very thin. It's, it's about uh, 20 thou thick, uh, so that's pretty good because it's a fairly thick, fairly stout knife. Um, we're ready to go, so let's get to making a two-brick forge. Mm -hmm. 